What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another Friday night here on the Sports Kid Wrestling Facebook page and Wrestle Binge by Sports Kid YouTube channel. Rick Uchino, SP3, the wrestling legend himself, Dutch Mantel, with you recapping tonight's episode of Friday Night SmackDown live from Pittsburgh, PA. We have a new number one contender for Cody Rhodes' WWE Championship. We had a women's WWE title match main event, although it did not see a clean finish. Blood appears to be back to stay, baby, and we have new. Hey, that wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't blood. That wasn't. That wasn't blood. You're kidding me. That was some fake ass shit. I it think. wasn't. No. Man, every my man. Next, you're going to tell me there's no Easter Bunny. Well, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. <laughs> Nice of you. <clears throat> you've, been, nice you've been in the dark for so long. I was going to. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, it's still real to me, damn it. All right. We appreciate everybody who is in. Make sure to get your comments in. Get those super chats in. That's the way to guarantee your comment gets read on the air. If you got a question for Dutch, send in a super chat. Uh, yep. We appreciate the support. Uh, every dime he comes in helps to uh, support our staff here at Sports Kita. So thank you guys so much. Uh, before we get into uh, SmackDown tonight here, gentlemen. What? What does? No, nothing. I'm, you said help support the staff, so I'm saying, hey, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I, 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 need, I love, love some of that. <laughs> I need, yeah. I need some support. Anyway, I, I'm assuming it supports us. I don't, I don't know where the hell else to go. Anyway, so before we get into the show tonight, uh, we actually had uh, some some post WrestleMania WWE releases. We had three of them tonight. <laughs> Sure Interesting is. enough that the news broke during the show, but regardless, yep. uh, three names who, well, frankly, we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, Jinder That's Mahal, why they were released. Zion Quinn and Zia Lee. If your name starts with an X, it was a bad night for you. Uh, they are all hitting the free agency market after the next 90 days. Jinder Mahal actually tweeted out that he quit, uh, but according to uh, PW Insider and uh, Fightful Select, he was in fact released. Um, guys, I didn't believe him. Yeah, <laughs> the the gender has in fact been hindered. Uh, we look. I I never want to see anybody lose their job, like in any shape, way, shape, or form. Um, you don't you don't care. No, Rick. Nothing quit, surprising quit buttering, here, though, guys. Quit buttering like, up to the people. Like seriously, no, nothing surprising here. Like it, it was obvious that they had no plans for these people, and and we were talking before we went on the air tonight. So we haven't seen Jinder Mahal since. On television, outside the Andre Ma the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, since he wrestled Seth Rollins, he's been on main event or off TV since. Yeah, he, he injured, uh, Seth Rollins got injured in his matchup, and he took the blame. And he had, he wasn't on television until they absolutely needed him to fill some bodies in an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. How long has he been there? Gender has been with the company for like the better part of a decade. He left for a few years in between when yeah. he got released. But got he came super back. Jacked, came yeah. back. Won the WWE title in 2017, 2016. Yeah, because he came he came into the company in like 2012. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's mm. like, he's like been with the company for a decade. Been a bit. That's 10 years. No. That's 10 years, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's twelve. If he came in in twenty twelve, it's twelve years. But well, yeah. no, I'm saying minus two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. minus got, minus the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you can't have me doing math on a. On I did a the math. I did the math. For you. I forgot you, you said, said the two. Years. Years. What are we arguing about here, Dutch? What? What? Your reaction to? No, because uh, you seriously now you, you tried to correct Sid. I understood him when he said Thank minus you. the two. He was he was gone two years. That's your reaction to the releases tonight. Well, my first thing was, who? I hadn't seen them for so long. And who are the ex-people? Zia Lee and Zion Quinn. Zion Quinn's weird. Wasn't he, like, technically drafted or called up yeah. or a free agent in the draft last year? And I don't think I don't we've seen know. him on TV since. I don't even know who he is. He was drafted in the supplemental draft. He was an NXT talent. Uh, oh. I, think he, I think he was drafted oh. to Raw. He was that in... Explains uh, it. He was in the Intercontinental Championship Battle Royal in oh. May of twenty in May of twenty twenty three that Mustafa Ali, someone who was released last year, won to face Gunther 
for the Intercontinental Championship at Night of Champions last year. That was the last appearance, the only and last appearance that he made on main roster television after being called up. His last match with the company was a dark match against Braun Breaker on uh, before the March 1st, 2024 episode of SmackDown. I feel like I saw him at some point during WrestleMania. Did you just read that, Sid? No, I actually did, did that the research just come before. Off the, that just come off the top of your head. Yeah, I did the research before the show. See, there are these magical things called computers. Boy, you can look some stuff up every now and again. But um, it, it's going to be interesting. I, I do feel bad for Zia Lee and the fact that she was, she was somebody who kind, they, kind, they, they brought her up. They gave her like this really awesome entrance and these great vignettes. And it looked like she had this really cool character and a concept put together. And, and then she wrestled what twice. And then they took her off TV and then three, three times. Cause I've done my research. I think Triple H brings her back and she wrestles Becky Lynch one time. It was a good match. And then we didn't see her again after that. And now she's, and how long ago was that? She actually had a mini program. She had a mini program with Becky That's Lynch right, last yeah, year yeah. on on a television. Mini, yeah, when program. Becky when when Becky Lynch was NXT Women's Champion, mm -hmm. uh, Zaya Lee was looking for a shot. Had a little program with her on Monday Night Raw. It was a pretty good but forgettable matchup, okay. and Let, they moved on. Let's go back to the scuttle scuttle butt. Gender said he was he quit. Nah, he was, he was he was released. Yeah, but that's what I, he, he said on Twitter. That. He said, said he said on Twitter that he quit. Yes, is that what he said? That, that's that's nice. My my hot supermodel girlfriend breaks up with me, and I say, "Oh, I broke up with her." Well, well, you know, yeah, okay. yeah. He he tweeted out, "I quit." Majaraha, excuse me, Majaraha out, and then there was the money bag sign. And he immediately changed his bio, free agent in ninety days. I wouldn't okay. be surprised if he got picked up somewhere. Hey, somebody we could get. He needs to, he, somebody said he needs on the on the in the chat needs to go to NWA. Yeah. What is NWA? Is that a what is that? Uh, sure. It's this rap group with Ice Cube. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> that's what it was. Uh, I think gender would be a good. I wasn't going to put that over, but I, I just finally decided. Yeah, it was pretty good. Gender would be a good fit for TNA. Yeah, he would. We, can we get the one off? Can we get gender versus hook and AEW on like rampage? Well, I, I'm down for that. Hook versus <laughs> hook versus uh, gender. So you could job out to hook. I'm good. Yeah, hook, hook wins in like 15 seconds, and then we never see Jinder Mahal again in in AEW. Yeah. Yeah. He has a quicker a quicker AEW run than Matt Cardona. Oof. Oof. Not good. Uh, Boy. I do wish the best for all these people again. I do hate the fact that anybody loses their job, but again, it. Hey, if they want to wrestle, this is the best chance they're going to get to wrestle because it's clear WWE just did not uh, did not have any plans for them. Uh, we have uh, Valio 13 saying Xyli was good, man, but they prefer Naya anyways. Naya, Naya's I, do, I do, too. I do, too. Uh, Benny saying not uh, not Xyli, so unfair. Angry face emoji. George what's saying I'd rather see Jinder Mahal as champ over Cody. So we we they got some, they got some fans here in the chat. Got some not fans long. Not after we get chat. through trashing them. We got. Uh, you need to quit I'm, trashing them, Rick. George, George has started drinking early tonight. Would rather see Jinder Mahal as champ over Cody. I that's mean, good. That's that's. that's I mean, opinion. that's a that's yeah, that's, that's, an that's an opinion. A, that's an opinion. That's an opinion. We do have a first challenger for Cody Rhodes and his WWE championship. Tonight's SmackDown started off hot right into the action. LA Knight, AJ Styles, WrestleMania rematch. Styles gets the win after Straight he out. raked Knight over the top rope, thumbed him in the eye, forearm to the temple, then hit the phenomenal forearm. Um, not a clean, clean win, but about as clean as a win as a heel can get these days. Uh, AJ Styles moves on. We got two Georgia boys throwing down in France over the WWE Championship. Dutch, your uh, thoughts on the match? Thoughts on AJ Styles becoming the the new number one contender? Well, he said two Georgia boys meeting up in France. Yeah, it, it was probably a little better than that little flea market they used to wrestle in in Cartersville. I bet there's a big difference there. But hey, good luck to them. 
and let's see what they do. I mean, I think they have a great house. France is a, it, it's just one is this one show in France? Uh, I think no, I think Smackdown, Smackdown before. Yeah. Smackdown before is there. I see. I may fly over there for that. Look at just you. Go You're to fancy. The show. I say we, we. That's all I'd say. That's all I know. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Sid, your thoughts. <laughs> Um, I like the matchup. I thought that this was a good follow up to their matchup at Mania. The match at Mania was better, but this was a good a good opener to the show. I don't I didn't really, really like the finish to the matchup because it felt kind of overbooked for no reason. Because what was the ref doing? I know that the ref was supposed to not see the poke into the eye, but they didn't do a good way to make the ref not look at it because it just randomly was like the ref turned around and was like What's going on here? I don't want to see him get his eye poked out and then turned around for the finish. It was weird. It was just very yeah. weird. And I think commentary tried to cover up for him, too. I think Corey yeah. said something along the lines of uh, our vision was uh, obstructed just as the refs was on the eye poke. I don't remember. I don't remember what happened in that situation. I have those, to go back. those refs, they get heat with me anyway. Like when they're trying to break somebody up, it's almost like they're afraid to get within three feet of them. Oh, and they're just doing this all the time. Whoa, you guys stop. What? I mean, that gets a little bit old. If you're going to do something, do something. But they don't ever do anything. So I miss the old way. At least the referee would get in there. And and, I, and got, I always thought the eye poke was a warning. Wasn't that a warning, Dutch? You get a eye, you do an eye poke in a match, that's a warning? That's not a DQ. I, I have. Well, I guess I don't know. You, I, we used to just to make them up as we went, as we went along. You know, you're in bad company when you see the referee pull out the rule book in the middle of the match and start reading up on it. Oh no, yeah. here, here. That's that's what it says. I said, oh, my mistake. I'm sorry. Everything is always to the ref's discretion. It is not always what they they drop back to if something don't make sense. Ah, it's up to the ref's discretion whether or not he wants to count or not, whether or not he wants to uh, let that five count go or not. Yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll chalk it up to that. Um, I like Styles as Cody's first challenger. I think these two will have a good match. Nice little story there. Georgia guys who can face each other, and he's going to lose. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that, that's what it is. That's why I didn't want LA Knight to win this match. Because the last thing LA Knight needs to do is lose another championship match. So we'll see what happens with him from this point out. It kind of feels like he needs to get drafted to another brand and get a fresh start and get in a different title picture. And I think Monday Night Raw might be a good spot for him. Get him away from AJ Styles, split these guys when, up. And when is the draft? Coming up uh, next, next Friday. Next Friday. Friday. Starts the draft. Night one in okay. Cincinnati. Let's Catch go, me baby. Up, guys. Catch me up on this. The draft. Yes. Mm -hmm. How does it work? I've Great question. About it, but whatever, oh, whatever way they wanted to work, they they've they change the rules every year. Yep. Um, well, who who makes the decisions? Triple they change H. the rules every year. Triple H. <laughs> but on screen, well, it's going to be Nick Aldis, and uh, we we assume anyway because they haven't announced any official rules. No, no. Whose era have they said it was? Who's ever is it? It's Triple H's ever. On so, screen. So it, even the, the even on, are be even on the screen. Oh, the GMs okay. are going to be making the. I'm yeah, saying in a kayfabe yeah. era, they've been building up this rivalry between Adam Pierce and Nick. Even Triple H put Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce over tonight. And they've, they got the backstage segments with Ava. If I had to guess, on screen, the GMs for Raw SmackDown, and we believe NXT is going to be involved in this, they're going to be making the picks. I, I don't know how the NXT thing is going to work. Um, are they just going to create like draft minute, pools? NXT, where in, NXT is in, in it this time? We believe. We don't know for draft. sure. They have not they can, given us any official rules whatsoever. I wish they would. Well, I'm just asking. They have you guys pay you you guys actually pay attention to it? I I just do we try. We, we I try. Just, like I'm going to try to put together a mock draft for this, say. but it's hard when I don't know what the freaking rules. <laughs> what the freaking rules. We're Hopefully. doing a, mock, a, mock, a live mock draft on True Hill Heat. Now, Next NXT point. is on equal footing with uh, SmackDown and Raw. It's the third brand of WWE. Yeah, they're pretty open. It's developmental now. But they can, they're can they in on the draft, is what I'm saying. That's what thats what they kind of uh, alluded to. Hinted at, on, yeah. Yeah, on the Raw after mm -hmm. WrestleMania. Like, I, I feel like they need to establish that NXT can only pick from, like, a pool of 
talent that has not been protected. <laughs> like there, there needs to be like eligible superstars who can go to NXT because otherwise what's going to stop Ava from saying, Hey, I want Becky Lynch. Let's bring her in. I want yeah, AJ Styles. Let's bring him into NXT. If I was I mean, NXT, I'd pick Cody Rhodes right off the bat and send yeah. him to NXT. I, I am pretty sure that um, NXT will not be getting a number one pick. So yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet. Yeah. Bit on that, and then they probably just keep their own champion anyway. Uh, well, I mean, maybe not. Ela Dragunov is rumored to be going up to the main roster, so and Roxanne Perez may be going up to the main roster too. So, and uh, that's if Ilya Dragunov is the champion by next Friday. That's a good point. That's that a very, is a good very point. Good, good point. Good. good point, Sid. So, hopefully, we'll figure out what the actual rules are uh, to the draft this coming Monday. Okay. We do have a, yeah. Sid, this is your new project. You need to research the rules of okay. the draft. Okay. Gotcha. And I want you to have a full report by next Friday. If you could. <laughs> you well, I mean, I mean, I'll figure to. out how the draft works by next Friday when the draft happens. Yeah, so I am looking forward to seeing how it's different this year with Lee Fitting in charge and them going to a more sports-oriented presentation of this. Lee Fitting, obviously, with College Game Day. He's worked with college football players, knows how the NFL draft process works. I am interested to see if the production and how they handle things is a little closer, a little similar to how the NFL draft runs things. So I am looking forward to seeing how they change things up this year. We'll see. Uh, we got Roland Curtis sending in a super chat. Uh, I've heard fans describe Jinder Mahal. As the worst WWE champion ever. Do you guys agree? Disagree? Wait what is your criteria we, for a Roman, great pro wrestling we, champion we, character? We have a rule here. That we don't knock any talent at all. <sighs> we put over their strong points and their weak points that we, we just kind of go by. It. So is he the, what do you say, is the worst WWE champ ever? Okay. Sid, what's your research say about that? Uh, Sid's um, been very open about this. Before. Yes, my, my research from my memory of Ginger Bohal as uh, WWE champion is, I agree, he was the worst WWE champion. He did not draw a dime. He actually actively <laughs> turned viewers away. The viewership yeah. for SmackDown was lower at the end of his reign than it was at the beginning of his reign. Thus, he made people go away from the product. He actively was not a good uh, main event character. He actively was not a good world champion character. He looked good in a suit. He had a great entrance. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But when he opened his mouth or when the bell rang, it all went away because he's not that guy. He's a good, He could be a good mid card heel but when you put a square peg into a round hole it does not work and that was gender mahal as wwe champion so it's not fans describing roland uh mahal as the worst wwe champion it's what he was mm -hmm. and what's the criteria for a great wwe champion Everything except for the entrance and the suits do the yeah. opposite of what gender mahal did Everything okay. except for those two things. Yeah, uh, Roland, I, I guess he he agrees with you. Or the, he the, agrees with the and I, I didn't even I didn't even mention the awful matches that were all the same, had interference, slow, methodical rest holes in the late 2010s. You're wrestling like you're in the early 80s. That's the when he booking, drew money. The booking also, I was going to get to that. The booking of Jinder Mahal helped. No one bought into Jinder Mahal because, like, this dude literally did not win a match until I believe he won, like, a fatal four-way number one contender match or something yeah. like that. And that was, like, his first win since he came back. And then he faces Randy at Backlash, I think yep. it was. Backlash 2017. Oh, so we're coming up on seven years since that. Uh, and he beats Randy Orton. He just beats Randy Orton. So he gets like two wins in a row. He beats Randy Orton, and all of a sudden he's a WWE champion. And people are like, oh, well, this will last all eight minutes. And then he goes six months as the WWE champion. And the only reason they took the belt off of him is because Brock Lesnar did not want to wrestle him at Survivor Series. So Brock Lesnar was the reason why Jinder Mahal lost the WWE championship. And then who did they put it on? Daniel Bryan? They put it on Daniel Bryan after that? No, they put it on AJ Styles. Was it AJ Styles? Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember which one was which. I know uh, Brian faced Brock Lesnar at one of those, one of those pay per views. But yeah, Brian also, beat AJ. Yeah, ended that ring. And, and it also didn't help the fact that the WWE Championship was coming off of this just 
hot potato booking where AJ Styles had it at the Royal Rumble. He loses it to John Cena. John Cena drops it like two weeks later. His 16th world title reign, by the way, his record-breaking 16th world title reign lasts all two weeks. Bray Wyatt wins it inside of Elimination Chamber. Randy Orton then beats him for it at WrestleMania, which made no damn sense. And (laughs) Jinder beats him a month later. And then they give it to Jinder for six months. Yeah, they they set him they set him up to fail from the get go, and all because Vince Vince just, I guess, liked the way he looked, liked the way he blame, looked. Blame it on Vince. I am. He was the Booker. He was. Well, he, he deserves a hundred percent. Vince is not here, so blame it on Vince. Blame a lot he of things needs- on him. Speaking of looking good, Solo Sokoa arrives, tribal chief style. He's decked out. He's got the suit. He's got the chain on. He's looking nice. Uh, he calls Tamatanga his MFT. Anybody going once? What does MFT stand for? Because we never got an answer on that. Anybody? Any theories? M- 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 what? MFT. M-F-T. Not, oh, not the digital that. art, not NFT. MFT. M. My favorite champ. No, my favorite. My, my favorite Tongan. That's it. <laughs> My, my mother, favorite. my mother, f- Tongan, um, <laughs> my, my future tribal chief, my family tree. That's it. My, my, my favorite. Yeah. Okay. I got it. So I'm going to stay up all night now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. I'm going to stay up all night figuring out. M. Hit, hit, us, hit us up in the chat. What, 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 what's your, what's your favorite guess on yeah, okay. M. Come on. F. Man. T. Yeah, we, we need to know because my I'm future tribal my... chief, my future tribal chief. Whoever gets it right will get a shout out on the next edition of Smack. There you Talk. go. Or or the Smack Talk edition of the episode when they finally let us know what MFT is. So about six I months like from now, we're, 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 it's going to be a full Jinder Mahal title run before we finally figured out what, <laughs> what MFT stands for. I did like the way that uh, Solo grabbed the mic from Heyman. I wish yeah. you just said, what the F are you talking about? Shut up. So, I, I love the so fact that so Heyman feels like a hostage right now. He does. He does. Solo took his phone away. He can't call his tribal chief. And his tribal chief ain't coming back anytime soon. And he's just like, well, what am I left to do? And okay, wait a minute. I had a question about that last week. Remember, is that the only way he can contact the tribal chief is through that phone? Now, that's about stupid. That really is. Wait a minute. He can only call him when, oh, I'll destroy the phone. It don't even I make mean, sense. Roman Reigns is a very important guy. He probably only has about five numbers in his phone and probably does not answer it unless it's one of those five people. So unless he's getting that call, that, that phone call from Paul Heyman's number that he knows, Roman Reigns ain't a guy who answers email. I guarantee you. He ain't on social media. He's alone on the island of relevancy, walking on his uh, his treadmill, getting ready to come back whenever he's ready to come back. So yeah, he probably he, and he probably he ain't watch the show. He's Brock Lesnar now. He don't watch the show. Uh, Roland Curtis with another super chat saying, "What is uh, Dutch's criteria for a great champion?" My name is Dutch, not Mantel. Like I think you should know that by now. Well, what was I mean, the question? Both, what was the question? What is your criteria criteria for a good champion? Great, uh, great. Maybe, maybe sell some tickets. Maybe, maybe get some people to watch you. That's what it is. And I don't think uh, our in- Indian friend can do that. That's why they kept it for how, how long did he keep it? Gender six Mahal? months. Six months. Six months. So they gave him every chance. They did. No, seriously. I think any wrestling fan that has watched wrestling for a while can immediately pick up anybody who would probably be a good choice as a champion. I don't say he'd work, but you got to listen to that crowd. They'll let you know if they like him or don't like him. If you hear crickets out there, eh, that'd be a bad choice, I think. And I don't even know if Jinder Mahal even got that, did he? But you listen I mean, to the they, people they, they and they, they him, will tell but- you. They booed him, but it, it, people would call it that go away heat. Uh, they they would say it's the wrong kind of heat. Yeah, that bare it, it, heat. It was channel. It was channel turning heat. Um, I mean, for for <laughs> me, a, 
I agree with Dutch, and I think that Cody kind of said it the best on the show tonight. It was like sometimes the title makes the guy or the guy makes the title. And I think a great champion is the guy who makes the title. Stone Cold Steve Austin made the WWF and WWE championship the biggest thing ever. Hulk Hogan did that in the in the 80s. And Bruno San Martino did that in the 70s and the 60s. That's what these guys are able to do. That's what Roman Reigns did with the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. And when the title is making the guy, it's just so I, obvious. And I don't think there was last. ever, I think, I don't think there was ever a more obvious state of that than Jinder Mahal. Like maybe there was Miz. Miz was like that as well because Miz was not ready in 2010, 2011 to be the WWE championship. And it was very much an instance of them trying to have the title make him a main eventer. And it did not work. So here we are. Uh, okay, John, let me ask you, let me ask you this, Mr. Research man. Let's take uh, the AJ Styles. If you put the title on him now, or would he make the title? The well, title AJ, he's already made. So yeah, yeah, he's already he's already a made guy. Okay, well, the, say you put the title on him now, the same one that you know that they've been fighting over here back and forth for forty two years. You think the attendance would go up or down? Think uh, people would be disappointed in him as a champion? Yeah, after yes. after Cody after Cody after Cody did all of that to lose the title right after, yeah, they would in his first yeah. defense. Yeah, they would definitely like, be yeah. disappointed in that. That's why AJ is a perfect guy because he can put on a good match, and you know they can have a nice little build to it, and he can lose. And it's a fresh matchup too. Yeah, it is for okay. sure. Uh, John with the foresight here, he uh, knew what my next question was going to be, so we'll hop right into it. What do you guys think about the new tag team title belts? We had Nick Aldis and Triple H out there to unveil the new WWE tag team that, championship. Now, that looks like a title belt. Superb! This is the best title design in the WWE already. Day Ever, one. of all time. Day, what, once they revealed it, I was like, oh, it's number one. It's yep. number one. That blew away those world tag team titles, which is just a miniature version of the world championship. That's all they did with the tag team titles on Raw. With this one, they actually made it off of the old WWF tag team championship design, and it's just great. Yep, it is. It's very good. And it, it looks good. <clears throat> it's distinguished looking as a champion uh, title belt should look. It's not blue or green or whatever, some kind of Mattel color they just pull off the wall. It looks like an old title belt, and it looks like it's important. So just they start trashing them and throw them in garbage cans and all that, but it does look good. It, it's, it's an improvement, a vast improvement. I love the design. Look, look those, those, Raw and tag, those Raw and SmackDown tag team title belts have been trashed. They've been trashed for the longest time. And I'm going to sit like when they combined them and they were like, oh, the undisputed tag team champions, the Usos had them for what, 600 days or whatever it was. And then we went through this long stretch where Judgment Day had them. I mean, I was hoping at some point they would just, Give us a, a new set of titles and call it a day, and everybody could stop carrying around those ugly ass things. Uh, so I'm happy to see those go. I'm happy that we're done with the Raw and SmackDown branding on all titles across the board, so we can avoid these awkward bullcrap title swaps like we had with with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Even though that instance single handedly gave uh, Becky's book the best line of the, <laughs> the entire book, if you haven't read it yet, it's fantastic. Um, but I love the design. I love the old school feel of it. Just my personal preference. I'd like a little pop of color, but I'm just nitpicking at that point. I'm just nitpicking. It looks a little too no, much like need, the Intercontinental title. They need, where it's just they, that black gold and the black. It just looks a little dull, just a little bit, but I love it. It looks great. They look great. Fast improvement. Well, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you agreeing with me. So we're at the same point. That's good. Now, you know what would make them look even better? If you had them. No, if the Street Profits you and had Sid, them. What if you and Sid all of a sudden showed up on TV and you're the champions? I'd buy it. I'd buy tickets yeah, to you Sid guys. Sid would have to be carrying the load on that one. He can, you know, I'll take all the heat. That was like the one good thing I was doing. I, I could sell. 
So I'll take all the heat. I'll get in there. I'll let Sid do the hot tag. I'll come in there. I'll hit the finish. Boom. Oh, yeah, dude. Over. Absolutely. Done. I'll do Let's the go. talking. I'll do the talking too. Then I'd, yeah, I'd be the go. booker and I'd give you the finish and you guys get back to the dressing room. And say, no, we'll have, what we'll have Dutch F be our manager. Doing? We'll have Dutch be our manager. He'll do the talking. Yeah, yeah. I'd do that. Yeah. And I wish some agent would come up and ask what the hell's going on. I'd just <laughs> cuss him out. Just damn trash the shit out of him. Uh, I do the think the uh, I do think the title belts would look better if they were around the waist of the Street Profits. They won the Fatal Four Way Number One Contenders match tonight. I thought this was a nice tag team showcase. Uh, some nice crash and burn spots. I thought Tyler Bate was a standout performer for me. The Street Profits were the right winners here. I would love to see them actually win the tag team titles for the first time in three damn years. It's been that long since they've held tag team title gold. They didn't say this match was for Backlash. Maybe they make it next week in Cincinnati so Angelo Dawkins can win a title in his hometown. SP3, what would you think of this, and were the Street Profits the right choice here? I, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was a super fun, action-packed four-way. I thought everybody got a chance to kind of be spotlighted. There was some awkward kind of... Uh, kind of like standing around and kind of like waiting notice that, yeah. through their spot in yeah, certain what places. If they're standing or, what if they're standing around looking at your watch? Oh, God. Yeah, Come yeah. On, Her Her on. Herberto, Herberto was the biggest, he was the biggest uh, criminal of that. Like he was on that apron for, he was like, all right, all right. <laughs> now. Uh, and then he got in and did the springboard. I was like, yo, dude, you were on that apron way too long. But what we got was super fun. I like the little spot with the double uh, moonsault by New Cash Republic and the dive to the outside by Montez Ford. That was a great little high spot to kind of put an exclamation point on the on the whole matchup. The little Tower of Dune spot that was awkward, but I like the little uh, press, double gorilla press slam off the top on Tyler Blake. Like you said, Tyler Blake got to showcase his power. So yeah, everybody uh, looked good in this one, and I thought yeah, Street Profits were the right winners. I thought that you need a a credible babyface tag team to go against A Town Down Under, but you don't take the titles off A Down Down Under. No. You heard the response they got? They got out there. They got heat. And a heat against Triple H, and you think they're gonna take yeah. the titles off of them? Nah, they got held on to those titles for a while. Mm. You were anti A Town down under winning those belts just a week ago. Who I predicted Ooh. them winning it, I actually predicted them winning it. I, I know you did, but you called them the worst tag team in the match. Yes, they were. I mean, what am I? What a, I did I say something wrong? I said it. no one corrected me when I said that, so I don't think. I said I don't anything. Even remember you, I don't remember you saying it. But I don't. I, but well, I, but I'm you saying, know why Dutch, I don't remember? I wasn't here. That's one good reason. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, Dutch, you've seen all these tag teams. The New Day, New Catch Republic, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, The Judgment Give it up. Day. Give it and, up. and it's A Town Down Under. Which one of those is the worst of those tag teams? I thought it was A Town Down Under. I'm sorry. That's just me. But Awesome Truth is worse than them. I'll give them that. Um, but ain't <laughs> down down under though. The, what they lack in in ring is what I was judging them on. They make up for it as characters and absolute yeah. douchebags. And I like what they were. I liked the fact that they turned up the douchebaggery against Triple H because no one does that. Everybody's been blowing smoke and kissing <laughs> Triple H's ass for the past two weeks. It's yeah. it was refreshing for some heels to play some good characters. You know what I yeah, love though? I, I love agree. Nick Aldis getting in there, getting up in their face, like and showing a little bit of attitude too. Like, hey, we ain't accepting this kind of horse crap here. Uh, that I thought that was nice because sometimes Nick can be, he can just be a little monotone. So I like it when he really gets amped up and fired up, like he was with Paul Heyman as well. Uh, when uh, the NXT parking lot got called up to the main roster earlier on in the night, we'll get to that uh, segment coming up here in a little bit. Uh, Dutch, what did you think of the tag team title match and um, the Street Profits winning tonight? I've seen it 400 times. And everybody's got to say that. It's the same crap over and over and over and again. It's, it's another match that fills time with really no story. I mean, you can't have stories on everything. I got that. But it's they do the same stuff over and over and over and by that time, it's like, you know, you're watching that screen and it's like rolling over in your head and 
It's a damn wonder we still got a brain at all after watching this crap, after over and over and over. But the mattress is good, mattress passable. So, who is the manager of the... Of, who's the big guys? What are their names? Authors of Pain. Yeah. Who's the manager of them Paul, now? Paul Hellering. Paul Hellering? Paul Ellering, the, the old Ellering. manager of the Legion has, of Doom. Me, okay, correct me. Has he even, has, has he done an interview yet, or has he said anything? I haven't heard him say anything. The He had a couple of lines in the first, like, few Final Testament vignettes. Okay, and the story, why is he there now? Have they even said anything about that? He just showed up one day, as I remember. Well, he was with them in NXT, and that's about it. Did they explain to the people who don't watch NXT, which I'm a member, <laughs> Do they? did they explain why he was there? Yeah, or where he came back, from? He, he's back with the Authors of Pain, and they joined up with Carrie and Cross and Scarlet to form the Final Testament. And they're and going they back do, to NXT. And, and, and they do spooky promos <laughs> that have different lights, and they say uh, TikTok, and oh yeah, they're TikTok. gonna and they're and gonna they destroy lose. the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley, who don't have a stable name still. So. <laughs> They've never so, they 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 keep referring to themselves as the pride on social media, but they have never said it on television. Never they refer to themselves as what the pride, the, the pride. pride. At least at least with but, like at least with like Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, like they introduce them by their names, but then commentary yeah. always calls them a town down under. Like at yeah. least at least with that, the commentary acknowledges that they have a name. They don't do that with the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. Like, commentary no. still just calls them Street Profits and Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Oh, and here's B-Fab as well. <laughs> uh, we did get another QR code tonight here, gentlemen, uh, which showed a, a black cloaked figure. Uh, and I believe if you clicked on the image, it took you to... Uh, another video. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but uh, it is another hint that we are getting the return of Bo Dallas in some way, shape, or form, whether it's going to be as Uncle Howdy, whether it's going to be uh, a new iteration of Bo Dallas. I'm, I am interested to get your guys' thoughts, though, on Bo here. L let's be honest. He's being tasked with carry on Br carrying on Bray Wyatt's legacy here and carrying on his storyline and, and his characters and uh, everything that he meant. Um Man, that's a daunting task. And we've never, Bo Bo has never on, really got the chance to on, show man, his character chops on television. So this is a good opportunity for like, like at least more really? than just, yeah, just more than just a guy who runs down and throws his hand up in the air and does the comedy. The whole, the the whole Bo Lee, he was an inspirational speaker. That was a whole character. I think he showed good character work, especially in his NXT run. But yeah, this is going to be a different level and he's going to be asked to try to give kind of the, on a similar level of the character depth and performance that his brother gave, which is a daunting task, but this will mark like the first time since like Eddie Carr Guerrero's passing that they've done something like this as far as like a family member following up on the legacy of a departed of a passed away a uh, superstar like they didn't do that when they could have with Cody going back to Cody Rhodes when Dusty passed away yeah. back just 10 years ago and now here we are and Bo's able to do it so I'm hoping that they have an idea that they can execute properly and they can follow through on it and that I won't be just saying that uh, it's another one where the bell rings and it all falls apart. I hope that they have a concrete of how to have a good wrestling match also with a st good story. Yeah, whatever whatever they're doing with, uh, with Bo here. Um, Dutch, there's a lot of people who there are rumors floating around or there's uh, theories floating around that maybe they could bring in Eric Rowan. Old Wyatt member families. Uh, there's rumors may or belief that there's, maybe there's reports that he's already signed with the company. Yeah, and he yeah exactly. But bringing in Eric Rowan, Matt Hardy's another name that people have thrown out there. People who have passed with Bray Wyatt. 
Um, Alexa Bliss, we know she's she's working out. Don't know how close she is to coming back, but Raw's in Columbus, her hometown, this coming Monday. She obviously has major history with Bray Wyatt and is tied into that folklore there. Um, do you think that would that would help uh, to bring in more of the old uh, Wyatt alliances from the past to, to help Bo out here? Well, he needs help. He needs a lot of it. And this could backfire in their faces big time. Because it has to be done, I'm sure, in a certain way. And I don't know. I don't have an idea for it at all. I know they're looking forward to pay homage to to Bray, but that might be a bigger task than they think. So we'll see what they do, and I'll judge it on the other end. I I want to see better pacing because it seems when even when Bray was around, it seemed like they kept kicking the can down the road as to where we were getting to it. Let's get some better pacing. Let's actually have things happen and have story progression week in and week out whenever Bo and whomever is going to be with him shows up on television. That's what I'm going to be looking for here. I listened to one of Bray's interviews one time, and he did a lot. But at the end of it, I'm thinking, what did he say? Because he was... I mean, he was all over the place. Good interview. He he performed it well. But when he left, I'm thinking, what's it mean? Where's it going? And he he's the like, type who he never really he never really got going. I don't think ever. He was he, over, but he never really got there. He was a captivating speaker, but yeah, there yes. was a lot. Of, there wasn't a lot of substance, especially at a certain point with the with the kind of the uh, the Wyatt family character. As far as like the the last run, I always I will always kind of view it as it peaked with the return. Mm-hmm. Like I it agree. was it was it was good a couple of weeks after the return, but the peak of it was the build up to the return, and then the return itself was yeah. the peak. That that those first couple exchanges with LA Knight, it it was like it was good. It was good, yeah. And yeah, man, I don't know. I just kept waiting for something to happen and waiting for something to happen and <laughs> there to be some kind of progression with the Uncle Howdy stuff. And it's like finally we start to get that progression, and then unfortunately, you know, what happened yeah. happened. Oh uh, my, my my only fear is that this is gonna be another case of yeah, this is gonna too. be it's gonna it's gonna be fun to like oh there's another clue there's another clue there's another clue and it's gonna be fun when it finally oh it's gonna happen here the big return or big reveal that's gonna be great but I'm oh I, th and then what yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what I'm worried about that's what I'm worried about and 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 Bray Wyatt fans they loved him so much that they would be willing to forgive the missteps yeah are they gonna be willing to forgive any missteps with Bo? I don't know. I don't I don't know the answer. That's why I say this is this is a daunting task. But What's hey man. Word if, again, if, daunting, if he if he wants daunting. daunting. If What's he wants to take again, it on, daunting. you know, God bless and good luck. And I I I hope it's good. I hope it's really, really good. Uh the women's world heavyweight championship will be decided this Monday night on Raw in a battle royal. <sighs> Weak sauce. Weak sauce but i mean what did y'all expect that when they sucks. said they were going to crown a new champion this week? in a week you got to pay they got a pay-per-view they got a damn pay-per-view in two weeks and we got like nine title matches on television like i'm all for title matches on television that's fine but you got pay-per-view pay -per two weeks ago why don't you just do like two fatal four ways to decide like do what you did with aj styles and la night just give me two fatal four ways and hey it's becky lynch and Liv morgan and great there we go are we what all in agreement that Liv morgan what happened to just simple matches simple wins take it to the pay-per-view then work your angle yeah i mean i i think they're trying what they've done so far is very good excellent but i think when you get in that gimmickville land tend to stay there and the more gimmicks you got, the more space you have to screw it up. So a women's battle royal. See, it's like like the full way we had tonight, the tag teams. It doesn't excite me because they've done oh. it so many times. The women's pay-per-view. I mean, 
it's, it's not exciting anymore. The, the Rumble's different, right? The, the Just the rules, the basic setup, the psychology of it. The Royal Rumble is different. I find every other Battle Royal, for the most part, just normal straight Battle Royal. Here's 30 people in a ring and let's go. Until the last two minutes of the match, it's just like, let's let's speed this shit up. Let's go. Let's start chucking people on the top rope because it's just a bunch of people standing around because they can't bump because the ring is full. Just eye pokes and elbow strikes and this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, let's go. Like any any battle royal that's over five minutes, I get bored instantly. Uh, Ryan Markham saying, where were, were Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes tonight? Cody Rhodes is on the UK tour. Uh, that's why we got the uh, taped interview tonight. I don't know where Randy's at. I don't think he's on. I think I think Randy's taking a post WrestleMania vacation because he was off last week. He's off this yeah. week. Yeah. So that's what I heard. He was taking a post. Uh, yeah, a post WrestleMania vacation. That's he'll be he'll, he'll be back after after backlash. Yeah, yeah he'll oh, get drafted it. somewhere and then he'll yeah. show back up. Okay. Yeah, but so what do you regardless. think of the show overall, Rick? One to I mean, ten. I mean, we, well, we, we didn't have... even get to the best part. The I was gonna guy. say we 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 still got more show to get to. Dang, hang on. Asked a... Wait a minute, I just asked I, a question. I, I I think we only got oh, the wait blood line, the blood line in the main event to talk and about. And you right? you guys just cover me up, just shut yeah, me you. down. No, right. I got you. I got we'll, you. We'll, I go said go I just never do the show. Do do it by yourself. Go ahead. Ah, I'm sure the news writers would love that. Uh we did get a promo. With Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman. Heyman started off with the microphone in his hands. Then we got loud, we want Roman chants. Man, now that he's gone, everybody sure as hell wants to acknowledge his ass. How quick, how quick this turned around, yo. How he turned baby. He just had to leave again and he turned baby face. He had to lose the title. That was it. He had to lose the yeah. title. He just That's all he had to do. He had to lose and he had to have Cody put him over. That's it. Cody said, hey, Roman was great. He did a hell of a job. And everybody's like, we love you, Roman. We love you, Roman. Cody says you're cool. We love you, baby. Come back. <laughs> Same Philly crowd that booed him out of the building when he won the Royal Rumble. He loses, and all of a sudden it's like, we love you. We love you. <laughs> anyway, we didn't get Roman Reigns tonight. Uh, Paul Heyman starts, like, doing his whole crying and wobbling it's like i wish my tribal chief was here and then solo just takes the mic out of his hand solo is sick of everybody's shit right now uh and then they give him the old roman reigns treatment and they start booing him out of the building like his name is dominic mysterio finally he gets out he had to lose a brother to find a new one and he introduces tama tonga who throws a bloodied kevin owens out onto the ramp and just beats his ass down the ring KO gets helped up, taken to the back, but he's KO. He's going to come oh, back because yeah. he's an idiot and he's prideful and he starts fighting before he ultimately gets beat down. Uh, and we uh, we we see Tamatanga and Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman throwing up the ones. I don't think you could ask for a more dominant introduction if you're Tamatanga. Like, they're making this guy look like an absolute monster and a big deal right out of the gate here. I I, I love this tonight. I, I love this tonight. Whether the blood was real or not, just them absolutely just kicking the crap out of Kevin Owens for, for being in their old locker room last week. Just simple stuff like that. They're just trying to retake everything, and Solo's trying to rebuild everything in his image, and now he's got his own muscle. I love this. What would you guys think? Eh. <laughs> No, it was actually the, the it was good, but I've we've seen it a hundred times. But they're telling a good story. At least they're starting it, and I would give it a a passing rating. Is what I'll do. This was a another maintenance show. Ryan saying he can't handle this new bloodline. Please come back, Roman Reigns. SP three, well, your thoughts. Well, oh, I miss him already, your, too. It's working on you, Ryan. Um, I enjoyed this. I think that Solo Sokoa, he looked the role of the tribal chief. He presented himself as the tribal chief. I like Heyman's role in this of being the hostage and not really knowing what's going to happen and very unpredictable with Solo in control. And 
the most of all, I mean, Kevin Owens was great with his selling and everything. The camera work was not so great because Wednesday showed that his head was like kind of like uh, you had the blood kind of look to his hair, but there was no cut. It yeah. was like it immediately was like, oh, that's fake blood. Oh, OK, cool. <laughs> Um, but that's not Kevin and the Owens blood story. was coming from the middle of his head. Yeah, Look it was like. weird. It was yeah, it, 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 it was it was like they poured it right there. They poured the blood on his head like that, so it looked like it was kind of like. Oh, but hey, they tried their best. Uh, but Kevin Owens was a great baby face, you know, coming back to fight, showing his his character and just without saying a word. But man, the MVP of this whole thing was Tama Tonga. Tama Tonga came off like an absolute savage. He just came off like a beat. Like he was uncontrollable. I love the fact that you have Solo deliver the Samoan spike and then all the security hold them back. And then Tama uses that to start attacking him. And he just starts clubbing at him. And it, he came off like his father. He came off like Haku. That was great. I was like, yes, you immediately gave me Haku vibes. And then just the look that he was giving Nick Nick Aldis when he told him to back away and he had to stay. He's like, he's like hunched over like an animal. And like Solo has to hold him back like he's a pit bull. It was so great. I was like, yes, in two weeks, they have totally gave me the Tama Tonga that I fell in love with. In the Bullet Club. I've been a fan of Tama Tonga for well over a decade. And that is the vibes that I needed from him in WWE. That was great. You want to talk about just total savagery, right? They're looking for Kevin Owens throughout the early part of the night. That was like the first thing that Solo Sokoa said was, hey, where the hell is Kevin Owens? Paul Heyman, take me to him. They don't find him. And then we take a commercial break after he's left bloodied in the middle of the ring. And we come back and Nick Aldis has drug Paul Heyman out to the parking lot and showed that Tama Tonga crashed his rental and the KO's rental as soon as he got there. And that's when he started whooping his ass was right out there in the parking lot. And then once again, we see Nick Aldis start to show that, that emotion and that anger and that grit saying, Hey, we ain't going to tolerate this crap on this show. And now he's put it on Paul Heyman to fix it. Once again, putting Heyman between a rock and a hard place where he's, Got the authority figures now up his butt because Roman Reigns is gone. And he has no control over the young kids because Roman Reigns is gone. And he's got no way to contact Roman Reigns because his cell phone got stolen. Paul Heyman is going to really help get these, these two guys over, this new bloodline over. He's going to play an integral role in it. And this is why he's a Hall of Famer Dutch, because he can do it. Yep. And he was he did a great had a great performance tonight. Well, he can do it. So but it makes you think, and it even makes me think, where are they going with this? Because it's interesting already. Now let's see where they go. And that's what you want out of a fan. That's what you want out of a viewer. Because I could think of 400 different ways, but I don't have one that I would think would be the best way to go. But you know that Paul Heyman will be the center of it, and it'll be interesting. So... That's why that's why people watch. So we'll see. I I mean, if this doesn't lead to Solo Sokoa versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 41, then I need to get a new text chain because I'm a part of the Seven Bucks promote production text chain. I just want to let y'all know. Uh Rock versus Rock versus Cody is happening at WrestleMania 41. I actually said it on this show back in February, but none yeah. of y'all wanted to listen to me. Um it's happening. Oh, wait, a minute, at wait a minute. I listen to you. I'm talking about the people. I know y'all do. Oh, oh you I, know I y'all thought do. you said me and talking, me and Rick. No, I'm, I'm talking about that. I always listen to them. you, Sid. No, I'm talking I'll about listen them. to you. They don't it's, understand. It's, no, me, this, Dutch, this guy Rick, over there. and The Rock, we are all long Him. gamers. We're all long gamers. Yeah. We're all about the long game. And we know Rock and Cody is happening at WrestleMania next year. So Co Roman needs a big matchup. So he's got two options. is either Seth or Solo. Mm-hmm. I'm agreeing but, with you. But Seth, but Seth has two options in Roman and Punk. So I think they should go with Roman and Solo and do Punk and Seth. Speaking of Seth, if you missed the news today, uh, Becky Lynch on the Late Late Show on the UK tour said that Seth went uh, underwent knee surgery on Tuesday. Uh, oh. He had a torn meniscus. 
that he suffered before WrestleMania. So obviously he was going the whole time with that. That man wrestled the main event and then the opening night of WrestleMania and then showed back up in the main event later on that night on one knee. Give Seth Rollins all the respect in the world. By the way, that is also reportedly, by the way, why the match with Drew McIntyre looked like a Brock Lesnar finish fest is because that's what he was able to do. And he still went out there and put on a good show. Yep. So, Seth Rollins is the man. Yo, to do that. Yes, he is. But they, this is that, like exactly what I said when he got injured. I was like, Seth Rollins will 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 go to WrestleMania on one leg if he has to <laughs> to main event of WrestleMania. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. Yes, sir. And all I, right, our main event tonight at all. No, nah, I don't. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. That's that. That's the biggest opportunity of your career. Yeah, of course. Dude, he was never going to get a chance to wrestle The Rock again. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he was going to make it regardless of what he had to do. Smoke mirrors did not matter. He was going to be in the ring with The Rock, and that was one of like the best parts of the show. Is you could just tell that he was living his best life in that moment when he's standing across the front the ring from The Rock, and he's just giving them that sly smile, like it. You just felt I'm here, great. For the I'm guy here by God, and I'm yeah. going to enjoy it. And, and you know, Rock knew too because the Rock was before we even knew about the surgery. Rock said he was the MVP of WrestleMania weekend, yep. and that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't know an official timetable, John, but I, I'd guess he's going to be out for a few months. I would think. And that's two. That's two big injuries with the Rhea, with the Rhea injury and Seth. And Seth. That's two huge injuries for WWE. Yep. But Dutch has said it multiple times. They have like the bat log. They made so many different stars that you have people that can you know fill in for you at this point. I mean, I think the Rhea one is more glaring than the Seth one because the Rhea one, you're gonna. It really, it really is on the draft. To kind of even things out on the yeah brand. smack smackdown's women's roster is really stacked right now and it, it, it was showcased in the main event tonight when we had damage control sitting up in the eo skybox uh you know they get they get interviewed by kayla dakota starts you know hyping up the kabuki warriors saying eo's gonna win her title back anytime we still got the tag team champs everything's great and then all of a sudden Jade's music hits and Jade and Bianca show up in the box next to them, teasing the fact that, oh yeah, we're getting this women's tag team title match at some point, which means Bianca and Jade are going to have a run as the women's tag team champions as they should. And then we go through the entire main event of here's Bailey, here's Naomi. They go out there and they put on a pretty good match until, oh yeah, Tiffany Stratton shows up and lays them both out, hits the prettiest moonsault on both of them. Uh, I like the match. I hate that we didn't get a finish. I'm hoping we get a triple threat at backlash. But again, you just look at all the different way. What, what was that with uh, four members of damage control, two more. We had nine women in the main event segment tonight. Some of them need to go on raw for sure to, to even out the numbers here a little bit. I, th I think damage, damage control goes to raw. I think then. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the case, Bianca needs to stay on SmackDown. Bianca and damage control. Clean split. Let's let's separate them out. Bailey too. Keep keep Bailey on SmackDown and send damage control. I, 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 honest, honestly, honestly, I thought I thought that before the Rhea injury, they were gonna swap. They were gonna swap. They were gonna put the whole of Judgment Day on SmackDown and mm. send Cody and Bailey to Raw. But they kind of made a whole thing of Cody being a SmackDown person now. So I think they are gonna keep Cody and Bailey on SmackDown and keep Judgment Day on Raw. I, I like the the Rhea interview tonight when they that dark hair and that dark makeup and she looked she looked different and she looked serious and I'm thinking damn this is a this is a good interview because it's more than an interview it's you know you feel something sure I'm looking at her and she's pissed off and she's mad now that makes you pay attention to it I like her I've always oh, she... liked her. She's great. Um, you know, she's got that AC shoulder joint injury right now. Don't know how long she's going to be out. Hopefully she's, you know, able to come back by SummerSlam because as, as unlucky and as bad as this situation is, it gives them a great moment to build more heat. Liv Morgan needs to win the world heavyweight championship, win that battle Royal on Monday. <laughs> 
yeah. and then parade around for the next three months like she accomplished her goal. She stole everything away from Rhea Ripley. Shoulder for a shoulder, eye for an eye. I took your title. I'm the women's world heavyweight champion. Uh, she can film a segment where she's flirting with Dom. She can do whatever the hell she wants to do. Parade around and build some heat on Liv Morgan. She already got booed out of the building when she showed up on Monday. Build more heat on it. And then all of a sudden when Rhea is healthy and ready to come back. Take a vacation. It's, it's blood for blood. Let's go. Let's throw them out there. That I, I, They have backed their way into a good story a really really good story i think if they execute it correctly don't don't do something stupid like put the title on becky lynch on monday <laughs> like don't don't do that you don't need to lean on becky lynch that way and that's me saying that yeah that's but me. i mean I, I mean i'm glad becky lynch it seems like she's coming back because Li live does need someone to feud with until Rhea comes back and yeah there were, it was it was scraps without becky lynch coming back yeah, oh, I mean, they had. Well, here's the other thing: they had Zia, they advertised Zia Lee for that that battle royal, and then like 15 minutes later, she's tweeting out that she was released. That's hilarious. <laughs> Someone didn't they let put the me in a good spot. That. Now they release me. What the hell? I actually like the suggestion from uh, Kwan Webster: live versus Rhea in a first blood match. We haven't had one of those in a while. They, the, neither one of them have bleed. So what's the point of a first blood match? And I, I mean, don't much. Rhea did say she was coming back for blood. So, I mean, we could take it from a literal sense there if we wanted to. Okay. Women bleeding, I'm not a big fan of. I don't know why. I'm just not. I I, I wouldn't think the women would be, uh, if you use that fake blood, you can do it. But I mean, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Women, women bleed naturally like once a month. So. All right. Hey, Dutch, what was that question you wanted to ask us? <laughs> What's that? What that? Well, now that we've covered the whole show, what was that? What was that question you wanted to ask us? I forgot now. <laughs> hey, when I, when I ask the question, you either answer it then, don't expect to revisit it and me to remember it. Respect. Dutch, what did you think of the show overall tonight? It was okay. You had to give show. it a number grade. You had to give it a rating. I'll give it about a six. Sid? <laughs> six and a half, Sid. seven? Yeah. Sid's face tells the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> I would say seven. I'll say, I'll, I'll say seven. Okay, I'll seven. say seven. I, I enjoyed the first. I enjoyed the, the wrestling on the show. And uh, I think the best thing on the show was the bloodline segment. So. I mean, you're talking about oh, a yeah. show. You're talking about a show that didn't have Cody Rhodes, didn't have Roman Reigns, didn't have The Rock, didn't have Becky Lynch, didn't have Seth Rollins, didn't have like any of the Rhea Ripley. Any yeah, of the... so six and a half, six and a half. You're right. This okay. is very much. I, I... It's very much like a bit of star power. <laughs> but I still think it was a good show. I'd go six and a half and a seven, six and a half, seven, somewhere around there. So we're SB3. all in about the same spot. Yeah, yeah between six. It and was seven. an okay show. Yeah. SP3, uh, your any final thoughts? What you got going on, True Heel Heat this weekend? Uh, check out the True Heel Heat YouTube channel. We go live with our flagship podcast tomorrow, eleven oh five a.m. Eastern Time. True Heel Heat two seventy three. We'll be talking about this week in wrestling. How WWE is going to fill the void left by Seth Rollins and Rhea Ripley. We'll talk about how AEW can bounce back with Dynasty. Is the Motor City Machine Guns heading to AEW? We'll talk about that tomorrow. Myself, True Jaw Josh, and Miss Chrissy Love. Go over and subscribe. We are approaching 14,000 subscribers over on the True Hill Heat nice. YouTube channel. So go over and subscribe today. We got one final super chat here from Roland Curtis. Any thoughts on McMahon, Vince McMahon, that is, selling off his TKO shares? Vince needs to do something. I don't care what it is. Go we to need jail? something to talk. I don't think he's going to jail. I mean, he said he needs to do something. And well, where I'm sitting, that's what he well, needs to do. Know. Hey, what if, what if Trump and Vince both go to jail at the same time and their, their cells are right next to each other? Now that would be news, I would think, you know what I mean? And they talk to each other like every other day, they say. And they join the same gang. They, they both get the their heads shaved. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
put that well, on pay per view. They may like it. I don't know. Ozzy uh, with another super chat. Six out of twelve. Easter Bunny Rick. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot about the whole <laughs> Easter Bunny. Apparently, Ozzy operates on a larger scale. Dutch, what you got going on? Well, did we? But did we answer Roland's question? I think he's being forced to se to sell off the TKO stuff. I think TKO is making him sell sell the shares. Is what I read. Yeah, that's what it, it seems like. I think he only has like four percent of like ownership in wwe he, so by the end of the year he's going to be selling off all of his shares within tko and wwe he'll have no kind of vestige or investment in wwe and i wouldn't be surprised in like five years visic man tries to start up his own wrestling company nah i don't believe that even he's an egomaniac i would not may be surprised. Be. he may be but and I think he does it because he's got the money to do it. He'll buy Freddie Prince Jr.'s promotion. and. But I don't think he would even attempt to start a new promotion because I think he would he would fear uh, rejection of the fans. I think that would that means more to him than anything. If people said, ah, oh, he's, he's an idiot, he's this, that, and the other, he, I don't think he could handle that. So... So what have I got going on? Uh, hey, Dirty Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail.com. Hey, I'm come, I'm starting my own beer. I'm going to come out with my own. I'm going to make it myself, and I'm going to see because uh, uh, my son-in-law does it. So I'm going to try it in Dirty Dutch beer, and I tried it tonight. Hey, it's not bad. So Are you going to call I'm, it the Real American Lager? The Real American Lager. That's a good name. W O double G E R Lager. That's what I. Uh, so, and I'm on, coming out with my own trading cards. That's different. So, <laughs> and let's just see what happens. Where, where, where can may, people find all that? Hey, my Sid, you're like this. I think my website <laughs> is finally going to become functional in about a month, let's say. I've had it five years. <laughs> hey, better late than never. Hey, it's, it's, it, you get you get the job done. So at least I keep trying on it. And uh, so we'll see. It's dirtydutchmantel.com. So I had a guy, he's helping me out. First thing I had him take off, I said, take off these prices I had five years ago because they've never come down. I said, take that down because if I advertise it, of course I have to honor it because this is not their fault. It's my fault. And so he he, he disconnected all that stuff. But uh, I think this year is going to be a good year for this show. And I think it's a good year for WWE. And I uh, finally, for the first time, I, I can say this, I think, with without any regret, that I'm I'm interested in wrestling again. Wow. I'm really interested in, in seeing. Wow. Because, because before, eh. And, and I like what WWE has been doing. And I think... Now this, they had a lot of people missing tonight, which was probably it was a put together show. Did they do this tonight, or was this a? Or, or is this no, recorded? No, it's live. It's live. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's what I'm doing. One final quick question, Dutch. Next Friday, the draft in Cincinnati. Don't know if I'm going yet or not. I'll keep you guys posted. But you want me, you want um, me to go? If Gunther is drafted to SmackDown, your reaction will be be great. That's what I thought. I'm a huge, huge you want fan of back. Gunther. You want him back. Yeah, so no, bad. I want him. I want him back on SmackDown so I can see him. Fair enough. All right, guys. Uh draft coverage. We will have it next Friday, 10 10. I'll be if I'm there, I'll check in from the road and Sid will steer the ship. If not, we'll we'll all just be here and hopefully we'll talk about a good show. Uh other than that, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Why don't you guys ever ask me to steer the ship? I've never asked. We can barely get you to connect. Stop it. <laughs> that hurt my feelings, Rick. <laughs>
You see what he see why how he does that to me. He's so time. mean. He's so mean. He is. He's a mean bastard. He really is. He hurts I gotta, my feelings. I gotta he never keep says he's sorry. I, I'm I'm well, I'm a heel on this show. Well, I got to keep the heat up. Well, you are. You've always been a heel with me, anyway. So I mean, I, I, just look at the chat. Hey, one, one day I'm going to run in from the side and attack you and beat the shit out of you and leave you laying. That'd be a hell of an angle. That would be a good angle. It's one we've done on this show. I got a V trigger from Jeremy Lambert one time on this show. You got a you got a what? That is true. That happened. <laughs> a V trigger. What do you do? I got a knee to the face. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Did yeah. it hurt? No, he missed me completely. Did, did you get any? Did did you did you get any blood? Yeah, uh, I I grabbed some grenadine just like Kevin Owens did and, and poured it in my hair. Uh, oh, that's good. No, that's there good. you go. There we go. All right, guys. We're out. Nice Have little a great tent. Week.